but they're not essential. Remember, essential means air, essential means water, essential means love, essential means you better have it or you're going to die. Essential nutrients are nutrients that your body can't make, but they're like air. You need them or you're going to die. There's only one essential omega-3. There are lots of omega-3s, or there's a few omega-3s, but there's only one that is essential. It's called ALA. It's found in grass. It's found in seeds. Wheatgrass, by the way, is a tremendous source. Alfalfa. Grass in general is just amazing stuff. I find that very interesting how the whole earth, the whole planet is covered with grass. Even the ocean is covered with grass. Ocean grass, seaweed, algaes. And grasses are, I, I was good, I'm, I'm thinking among the most powerful foods you could ever eat, but you could make a case that they are the most powerful food you could ever eat. Grasses in the form of seaweed, grasses in the form of wheatgrass juice. Can't eat grass straight because we don't have the digestive system for eating it, but the biggest animals in the world do it. Why do you think the biggest animals in the world eat grass? Elephants eat grass, uh, giraffes eat grass. Uh, a water, a water buffalo eat grass, cows eat grass, gorillas eat grass, and leaves, grass and leaves. Grass and leaves are very similar. And then in the ocean, whales eat grass, ocean grass. The largest animals in the world subsist on grass because grass is majorly, majorly nutritionally dense, and it's especially good, especially nutritionally dense, especially a good source of fats. How interesting. You look at your grass and you say, well, there's no fat in this. It doesn't look very fatty, but it is. Grass is a wonderful source of fats. Seaweed is a wonderful source of fats. It's very interesting how these foods, which uh, appear to be mostly water, are great sources of good fats and, for that matter, fatty vitamins. Vegetation, vegetables are powerful, powerful, powerful foods. Now, I'm, I don't go as far as, you know, vegetarians and say only eat vegetables, but there's no arguing the fact that they are the powerful foods on the planet. Even animal foods are derived from vegetables. That's how cows make their meat. That's how animals make their flesh and their milk, for that matter, by eating grass, by eating leaves. Vegetation is incredibly powerful, even though it doesn't look substantial, a leaf. My dad used to call leaf food rabbit food. And a lot of people have this idea that leaves and grass are somehow insubstantial food. They don't appear to be substantial. But in essence, a leaf and a plant, a vegetable, uh, the, the difference between, there's a big difference between vegetables and fruits, a ve even though we lump them together. You can always tell a nutritional ignoramus if they say fruits and vegetables as if they were synonymous. That's a nutritional ignoramus, I call them. Hope I'm not offending anybody. But if you say fruits and vegetables, then you're revealing that you don't understand how these things work. A fruit is not a vegetable. It's distinct from a vegetable. A fruit is an ovary. It's a womb for a seed. And it's loaded with things that the seed can eat, mostly sugar. A vegetable, on the other hand, has all of its nutrients dispersed, and it's like a solar... A vegetable is a solar device, a solar, like a solar battery. It sucks up sun energy. This is what a vegetable does. A plant doesn't do this. A vegetable sucks up the sun's energy and in this magical, magical process somehow converts that solar energy uh, into physical matter. That's not what a fruit does. And that's what makes vegetables so unbelievably important and powerful. All right, we'll continue when we come back from our break. I'm Pharmacist Ben. You're listening. We're back on the bright side. Thank you for joining us. We're talking about uh, omega threes and inflammation, and anti-inflammation, and veggies. Veggies are ridiculously powerful, as I was saying before we went to break. And veggies aren't fruits. <laughs> veggies are uh, uh, solar ray trapping devices. A vegetable sucks up solar energy. What we call a vegetable sucks up solar energy at least the ones that are exposed to the sun, some vegetables are underground, but the ones that are exposed to the sun suck up solar energy, turn it into matter. And it's this, the machinery of solar transformation, if you will, the machinery of photosynthesis, that's what it's called, the machinery of photosynthesis is incredibly valuable for nutrition. And the stuff that's made from the sun, the sugars and the fats, those are also incredibly valuable for nutrition. And as it turns out, vegetation is a wonderful source of omega-3 fats, the hard-to-find omega-3 fats. 
Seeds are great source. Flax seeds, chia seeds, hemp seeds, mustard seeds. Seeds are great sources. In fact, the nature will stash away essential fatty acids in the seeds. But the, the, the green part, the leaves, and the green component of the vegetation is also packed with omega-3 fats. And even though we don't see it, it doesn't appear that way. When we look at a, a blade of grass or we look at a leaf, it doesn't look like it's got a lot of fat in it. It does. And really, really important fat and helpful fat and good fat. And it's just one reason why vegetables should comprise the vast majority of our calories. I think 80%. Now, I'm not saying animal food. I'm not going all vegetarian. And I don't think it's a good idea to go all vegetarian from a health perspective, even though there's certainly ethical reasons why you might want to. But from a health perspective, there are things in fats and animal foods. There are, there are things that the animal transforms into, transforms the vegetation it eats into that you can't get from vegetation. You can't get growth factors from vegetation. You can't really get uh, what are called the branched chain or the building amino acids from, from vegetation very well. So you do need animal protein, absolutely. But you don't need as much as people think you need. And certainly... Certainly, you need most, most of our calories needs to be coming from vegetables, not fruits, but from vegetables. All right, tomorrow we'll talk, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about omega-3s and omega-6s, and we'll talk about my favorite source of vegetation, my favorite vegetation, at least when it comes to nutritional, uh, it comes from a nutritional perspective, the ultimate food. I think it's the ultimate food. And that's, uh, well, t we'll talk about that tomorrow on the Bright Side. I'm Pharmacist Ben. Thanks for listening. 844-236-6010 is our number. Got a couple lines open for you. Let's go to Jerry in Santa Cruz. Good morning. What's up, Jerry? Hi, good morning. I was, um, I've had a few eight uh, rear-enders uh, skiing accidents. Okay. Uh, kind of, it should have dislocated my hip. But instead, it tore out some muscle from the bone. Oh, so you're healing now. Are you in the healing process? Uh, that was like 10 years ago. It was still oh. Yeah, I had an MRI. But, um, and, then, can... and then I felt like, you know, I, I fell 10 feet off of... Are you accident prone, Jerry? It sounds like you're a little accident prone there. How, <laughs> tell me, I'm just, know. I'm just teasing you. Tell me how I can help you. What, you just for pain and inflammation kind of thing for healing? Is that what you're thinking? Yeah, I really am concerned about my bones because it's a bone issue, how? and I do get a neurological. It's called he's called a neurologic chiropractor, and um, he, he helps me, but. I just want to be sure that I keep those bones healthy. I, I watched a YouTube uh, on a hip replacement, and I was thinking, I wonder, I never want to have one of those things. All right, I agree with you. So that's more than bones, though. There's bones and joints. In fact, basically, what you're talking about here is a part of your body called connective tissue. And it sounds like you're having a connective tissue problem, and it's very common, especially as we get older. Connective tissue is the stuff that holds us all intact. You've got four kinds of stuff that your body's made up of. It's made up of uh, muscles and connective tissue. That's what we call flesh. And then the whole thing is covered, candy-coated, if you will, with a, another type of tissue, and that's called an, uh, epithelial tissue. We're not going to go into that, and don't worry about what that's called. And then the whole thing is electrified with neural, neural tissue, nerve tissue. But the bulk of the body is made up of flesh, connective tissue and muscle tissue, and it sounds like that's where your problem is. Bone, by the way, is a connective tissue. Blood is a connective tissue. Connective tissue connects everything together. And this is very common. This is how we break down. The neural tissue doesn't really, that's not as significant a problem for most people in terms of its breakdown. Obviously, it deteriorates along with everything else, but not as much as the connective and the tissue and the flesh, the, the muscle tissue, the flesh part. So we got to build your connective tissue up is what we're looking at here, and there's lots of ways to do it. Well, we talked about the omega-3 fats and the omega-6 fats. They're vital because as long as you have inflammation, it's going to be very difficult for the body to repair itself. Get on the ultimate EFAs, 3 in the morning, 3 in the afternoon, 3 at night. Protein. Um, excuse also, me. soup. Yes? Excuse me. I have a bottle of EFAs, um, but uh, it says expired. No. The expired is expired. Don't, okay, you don't want do I throw to, them out? Or I, I would. Yes, of course. Yeah. Nutrition, when nutrition expires, when nutritional supplements expire, toss them. The expire doesn't mean they're going to kill you. It means they don't have the same potency. And you want potency. So and get I'm off some fresh. I, you know what, Jerry? If you keep, I, I won't be able to talk to you if you keep interrupting me here. So I got to, let me tell you everything and then I'll let you talk, okay? 
Okay. I want to get it up. There's a bunch of things you could do. All right, so your ultimate EFAs, three in the morning, or any EFAs, but I like the ultimate EFAs. Three in the morning, three in the afternoon, three at night. Make sure you're doing a good source of protein. And this isn't just for Jerry, you guys. This is for anybody. This is for anti-aging strategy. This is for repairing. This is for post-surgery. This is for any anybody who wants to build tissue, which is all of us. So EFA is number one. Uh, omega, uh, do a supplement to get make sure you're getting the, the, the right proportion and the minimum amount that you need. Good source of protein, especially protein that contains something called the branched chain amino acids, the BCAAs, whey protein and flesh protein, primarily also egg protein will get you the BCAAs. Make sure you're doing cartilage containing products. I know I probably say it every day. We probably talk about cartilage containing products. That's how important they are for building connective tissue, for fighting wrinkles, for supporting blood vessels, for anti-aging, for what you're talking about with bones and joints. And that would be cartilage containing foods, bone soup especially, and also glucosamine, uh, glucosamine capsules, glucosamine chondroitin, things like the glucogel caps, and also gelatin. Gelatin is a powerful, powerful nutritional supplement. Cheap old, plain old gelatin, which is collagen essentially, broken down collagen, is a wonderful nutritional supplement for many reasons, but certainly for building, helping build up connective tissue. Then don't forget about your trace or accessory nutrients. The vitamins and the minerals, your B vitamins and, and also vitamin C are very important, and also your fatty vitamins, which turn on the building process. Now, by the way, as we get older, we don't absorb these things. So making sure you're absorbing out of the digestive tract, you don't have any liver problems or intestinal problems, that's also important. And then last but most certainly not least, there are polysaccharides. That means long chain sugars that are important for the joints as well as for the bones. Substances like high aluronic acid, which I know many of you guys have heard of, can be very helpful. Also fucoidin, which is a wonderful uh, algae. We're going to talk about algaes tomorrow, by the way, which is loaded with these polysaccharides that are important for growth and development development and also for joint tissue specifically. Um, Jerry, don't go away because I'll let you finish up when we come back from our break, okay? But that's a ton of nutritional ideas for you. And if you want one more thing, apple cider vinegar with meals that and digestive enzymes with your meals will help you absorb these nutrients out of your food. All right, I'm Pharmacist Ben. You are listening to The Bright Side. 844-236-6010 is our number. We'll be back right after this. Okay, we're back on the bright side. 844-236-6010 is our number. Jerry in Santa Cruz. One last thing, and then I'll let you finish up here. Vitamin C, super duper important for building connective tissue. It's the key that turns on the engine of connective tissue production. All the other things are raw materials. Vitamin C is the key that turns on uh, or activates the production. So make sure you're getting enough vitamin C also with all those other nutrients. What's up, Jerry? So finish up if you have questions. Okay. I'm just having such a hard time, you know, because um, with the sea being uh, contaminated by Fukushima radiation, and then the cows and the chickens, they're tortured <laughs> animals. And I know. What are you going to do? Eggs. What are you going to do? Milk and eggs and cheese, you know. How good well, are they when well, they What are, are you going to do? Tortured. Jerry, I know. We're and stuck here on this planet together. I don't know how to answer that. We trashed the ocean. The We've trashed it for, for centuries. When I was a little kid growing up in New York, in New York City, I remember a, a barge going out twice a day from the city into the middle of the ocean, and the barge was pulling all the trash or a bunch of the trash from New York City. It would dump the trash in the ocean and then come back twice a day, and then old cars would wash up on the ocean. And it's, and this is ridiculous, obviously. This is idiotic. Isn't isn't whey a, 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 a waste product? No, it's not a waste product. And I want to know the bonehead who told you that. It's not a waste product. It used to be throw. It used to be wasted. That's true. They used to throw it out, and they used to feed it to the pigs. And then they noticed the pigs were getting all strong and big, and they decided to look what was in the way. And they said, "Oh my gosh, it's got the most perfect blend of amino acids for building things. Not to mention immune boosting factors and, and digestive system boosting factors. It is a processed food, and that is a bit of a problem. But if you factor, if you t eliminate that un unfortunate fact that it's processed, it is one of nature's most powerful foods." Foods. And you, if, if you can't do whey, and many people can't do whey, that's unfortunate. But if you can do whey, you want to be doing you want to be doing it daily. In my humble opinion, of course, hormone-free cows and and grass-fed ideally. But Jerry, you're raising some interesting questions. I don't know how to answer that. Uh, look, at the ocean is awful, and I don't like factory farming. And but what are you going to do? This is the world we created, and we're all responsible here. It's, you can't blame anybody, but you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, they say there's no such thing as a 
a bad employee, only bad bosses. Well, we are the